and welcome back. In this week's video, we're going to be talking about what you need to know about driving and the DVLA. This will crop up in the admin section of your exam, so expect a question or two to pop up, but also in your day to day careers too. But first, you need to know the difference between Group 1 and Group 2 drivers. Group 1 drivers drive vehicles such as cars and motorcycles, whereas Group 2 drivers operate heavy goods vehicles such as lorries and buses. Now let's talk about DVLA conditions in a bit more detail, kicking off with diabetes. If a patient has diet controlled or is on metformin, Group 1 drivers have no restrictions, whereas Group 2 drivers, generally, there are no restrictions if this good control. If a patient is on medications that can cause hypos, such as sulfonylureas, there's no restriction provided there's no hypo in the last 12 months for Group 1 drivers. But if you're a Group 2 driver, there's no restriction if you've not had more than one hypo in the last 12 months, full hypo awareness, you measure your BMs twice a day and two hourly whilst driving, and you can prove that you're hypo aware. If you're on insulin, Group 1 drivers need to let the DVLA know. But there's no restriction if you're hypo aware, no more than one hypo in the last 12 months, you measure your blood glucose two hours before travel and every two hours during travel. DVLA need to know for Group 2 drivers too, but there's no restriction and there's annual certification. If there's no more than one hypo in the last 12 months, there's full hypo awareness, there's BD, BM monitoring and two hourly monitoring whilst driving, they're hypo aware and can prove that they have an annual diabetic review with evidence of an average of three months of BM readings. What about cardiovascular disease? Well, if you have an arrhythmia, Group 1 drivers have no restrictions on their driving if it's well controlled for four weeks. Group 2 drivers, however, need three months of restriction until the symptoms are controlled. For permanent pacemakers, Group 1 drivers need one week off of driving, whereas Group 2 drivers need six weeks off of driving. For ICD implantation, Four weeks for Group 1 drivers if it's a prophylactic implantation, otherwise it's six months if it's a symptomatic VT, whereas if you're Group 2 driver, unfortunately it's a permanent ban. For those patients who've had coronary artery bypass grafts, it's four weeks for Group 1 drivers and three months for Group 2 drivers. For those patients who've had ACS or PCI, it's one week if it's a PCI, but four weeks if medically managed MI in Group 1 drivers, otherwise for Group 2 drivers it's six weeks. And finally, what about neurology? Well, if a patient has had a first fit, Group 1 drivers have six months off if it's a normal EEG. But if the EEG is abnormal, then it's 12 months off of driving. For Group 2 drivers, you need to be five years fit free. If you've known established epilepsy, in Group 1 drivers you need to be 12 months fit free, whereas Group 2 drivers, 10 years fit free. And if you're withdrawing from epilepsy medication, for Group 1 drivers, you need to avoid driving for six months. If you've recently had a stroke or a TIA, for Group 1 drivers you can't drive for four weeks, whereas for Group 2 drivers you can't drive for a year. And that's that. I hope you enjoyed the video on DBLA and driving restrictions. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment and subscribe, and head over to www.dorkydocs.com for more revision content. But otherwise, we'll see you in the next video.